when it comes to antennas, getting it up to get high can make all the difference in the performance of your mobile internet setup. Hi there, I'm Cherie with the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And when it comes to antennas, whether they're for cellular or for Wi-Fi, getting them up above local area obstacles can make a huge difference in the performance. Because other things, especially if they're made of metal or anything that has thickness to them, can block wireless signals coming into cellular or Wi-Fi. And that could include clutter on your roof, like an air conditioner or other antennas you might have for television or for satellite television. Those sorts of things can create an obstacle that blocks signal coming into it. And if you're working with an omnidirectional antenna that is looking 360 degrees around, you want as clear of a line of sight of 360 degrees around to optimize your setup. And other local area obstacles, such as a very tall RV or a building parked next to you, can also block the signals that you are receiving at your RV or boat. So all these things can make a difference, which means if you just install your antenna like right next to an air conditioner, you could be blocking part of the signal that you can receive. So getting your antenna up can make a huge difference to get it above the clutter of your own roof or radar arch on your boat, but there's some trade-offs. If you go too high, like this very tall antenna, well, if you're driving down the road with this up like this, about you know two feet above your RV, you risk hitting trees and bridges. And that's not good either. That could actually cause damage to your vessel. So you have to come up with ways to do an installation that kind of balances the need for height to get above the obstacles without presenting an obstacle yourself on the highway. And then there's also, if you add too much height, then you're having to extend the cables that come with your antenna and that can negate a lot of the gain that you're receiving from having that antenna in the first place with signal loss over these cables. And that can lead to not getting the greatest performance. So there's a lot of balance that comes in between your installation to get the height and as well as maximizing the gain that you are uh, trying to optimize for. So Chris is going to share with you some tips for, well, getting it up. So let's talk about ways to get your antenna up. No naughty thoughts there. But the key is getting it above the obstructions around you on your own roof or very importantly the other things near you. And the simplest is just a low profile antenna mounted on your roof. Now you could space it out so that it's as far away from other obstacles on your roof as possible or why not look into putting it on the highest point of your roof which in many RVs is the top of the air conditioner shroud and these low profile antennas only add a couple inches of extra height so not too much of a risk on top of your air conditioner and you mount them there route the wires down through and inside and suddenly you've got a 360 degree view that is a great way to get these low profile antennas up higher now what about antennas that are naturally tall they're going to be sticking up quite a bit higher than a low profile antenna well in these cases you've got to really balance do you want this up all the time or do you want something that can fold it down when you're underway? Now on a boat, of course, it makes sense to leave it up all the time unless you're passing under a small low bridge. But on an RV, this is definitely a concern and there are a couple of techniques to be able to lower an antenna like this and then raise it up for 360 degree views. Uh, the simplest is a lot of RVs have old school bat wing antennas, TV antennas that crank flat for the television while you're underway and then crank up from the inside nice and simple when you're stopped and well your cellular or your wi-fi antennas can actually go along for the ride so when you stop and crank up the antenna there it goes when you crank it down it's nice and flat it's not going to hit any trees but there's something very important to remember about this is antennas have an up to them so an antenna that is lying flat you think it's going to work while you're underway its signal is bouncing down and straight up and is not going to the places you need it so an antenna really needs to be up to work. So if you've got something that is laying it flat, don't expect it to work when you're just stopped on the side of the road unless you crank it up. Now, there are fancier ways to do that. There's actually motorized mounts that you can get that will do it with a flip of a switch and raise up. There are things like this uh, little CB um, folding mount here that lets the antenna just fold down, but you have to crawl up to go and do that. But you can have an antenna that actually folds 
down from its spring base. And several other techniques that gun can do that to still leave it permanently mounted up and just fold it out of the way when you don't need and it. And also on boats, there's a very common type of mount, the folding marine mount, which are easy. Just grab the handle and bend the antenna down when you're going under a bridge or have reasons to do that. And you can actually use those folding mounts to attach onto an RV ladder or something like that as well. So there are plenty of mounts that let antennas fold temporarily and bring them up when you need them. But well, what if you want to go even higher? Well, first off, is higher actually going to be better? Maybe, if it helps you get over a building or some other nearby obstacle. But a few extra feet is not going to make a difference to the cell tower um, because you're not, if, if all you're doing is raising the length and increasing your cable. So a little bit higher is okay, but a lot higher, not such a good deal. But the ways to go a lot higher are either flag poles or poles like this, PVC poles like this. So you can actually attach an antenna to a flag pole that you can, there's plenty of portable flag pole systems that either attach to a hitch on an RV or you back your tire over them or they clamp to the, the wheel somehow. And it's a lot of setup, but then if you've got a, a, an antenna you're trying to get really high and perhaps directional antenna that you want to aim, putting it on a flagpole like that and getting it up there is great. But don't go to the tip of the flagpole because they often blow in the wind. Halfway up is probably plenty fine, more stable, and doesn't require an ex antenna extension cable ideally. Now, if you want a simpler thing to set up that is a, a, a lot quicker and easier than... Um, you know, a full-on flagpole setup, there are suction cup mounts that you can actually just attach a PVC pole temporarily to the side of your RV, clamp it on, it will hold very securely, and you could route the cables in a window and um, have a very quick and easy way to set up, maybe not quite as polished and permanent as um, other ways of going about it, but a great way to get an antenna up easily. One other thing, for a lot of RVs where you have um, a rear ladder and stuff, you can actually keep your setup simpler by having your PVC pole just slide down the length of the ladder and then when you are stopped someplace where the, you want to raise it up, you just go and clamp it up at the high point of the ladder so you've got a very easy system. Some people even do pulley systems so they can extend and retract the PVCs using the ladder as kind of a guide. Um, all sorts of very, very clever systems. Important thing to remember though is whatever you do, if it's easy to set up, make sure you don't forget to crank it down before you hit the road or you can have a very, very embarrassing and or expensive mistake if you drive out and uh, a tree capsizes you. Now that's just a few of the many techniques for getting your antennas up and above things and they all can make a huge difference. Now, there are uh, obviously a lot of ways to get your antenna for optimal performance and getting it high, getting it up. And for our members, go look into our installation guides and some of our antenna specific gear center entries. We do have members that have submitted lots of photos over the years of how they have done their antenna installations to get around these challenges. And we also have guides to, of course, how to select your ideal antenna for cellular or Wi-Fi. They come in so many shapes and forms and there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages to different styles of antennas. So as always, thank you to our premium members for making these sorts of videos possible. And of course, for their support, they get extra perks like in-depth reviews, interacting with other members to get ideas, and discounts on some equipment as well. So until next time, get out there and get it up. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.